Duck hunting is a way of life in Arkansas. It's the spectacle of mallards in the treetops against the backdrop of the breaking day. It's the sound of whistling wings and the company of old friends that comfort hunters on the coldest winter mornings. Oh my. And for many Arkansas waterfowlers, it's also the joy of hunting with man's best friend. Freddy. Hunting retrievers are indispensable tools for many duck hunters, making quick and easy work of picking up birds in the typically difficult environments where duck hunting takes place. But unlike shotguns and boats and the sundry other contraptions duck hunters use, dogs are much more than mere tools. They are cherished companions that add joy and satisfaction to the hunt. And sometimes they're even more. I just am very thankful that uh, the time that Freddie was around when he was and his timing has been just excellent. He doesn't act like he's nearly 10, does he? Freddy isn't your ordinary Labrador retriever. But His official name is Grand Hunting Retriever Champion Upland Hunter Keith Bio Ready Freddy with the suffix HOF, as in Hall of Fame. Fewer than 70 dogs have been inducted to the Hunting Retriever Club Hall of Fame. Formed in 1984, the HRC has more than 8,000 members across 32 states and two provinces. It sanctions hunt tests for dogs that simulate hunting situations in which dogs are judged with a pass-fail grade against the organization's hunting standard. Several thousand dogs have earned the title of hunting retriever champion, but only a few hundred have earned the title of grand hunting retriever champion. Freddie passed the grand test four times. You know, he's long and rangy, and for a little while when he was a young dog, he was uncoordinated and he was uh, just too big for his britches. After training him a bit, when he got uh, mature, I guess, it was, it was pretty visible. He's just uh, recklessly enthusiastic. Freddie was born on Christmas Eve, 2009. Hall had the second pick of the litter and drove to Alexandria, Louisiana to pick up Freddie in early 2010. He was curious and very vibrant. Even when he was a puppy, he was interested in things, looking at things, focusing. Um, just a great little puppy. It was just instant, instant uh, connection that we had. Rear, heel, sit. Hall realized Freddie might have something special when he walked him to the line at a weekend hunt test for seasoned retrievers. He was about to come unglued, to come off the leash, and just really leaning into it. And very, very, e very visibly eager. And there was a guy walking out, and he said, that dog's got it. Right then, I, I was kind of hooked into the idea, well, let's see exactly how much of it he's got. Freddie had it. He soon earned his hunting retriever champion title and went on to pass his first HRC Grand hunt test. He also picked up lots of ducks for Hall, many of them at Biomeda Wildlife Management Area, where Hall has hunted since childhood and where, on a late season hunt in January 2014, Hall's life took a troubling turn. I walked in and uh, when the shooting started, I was like, I cannot point my finger at where those people are shooting. And you know, when you're duck hunting, it's not necessarily a safety issue where somebody is, but you want to tweak your spot based on where you guys in the same neck of the woods are. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't tell what, when somebody shot, whether it was coming from in front of me, behind me, to the left or to the right. I was, what is going on? Doctors made an alarming discovery. I went and had the uh, CAT scan, MRI, and all that business. And the next morning, the doctor called me and he said, man, 
I got to tell you, you have a really big tumor um, that has crushed the inside of your left ear. And uh, like, and, and we don't know whether or not, you know, it's cancerous, but it's very big. It was as big as my left hand spread wide and showing five and as thick as the middle of a golf ball, as a golf ball. And they're like that. Hall and his wife were expecting a baby later in the year. But as Hall waited for a June brain surgery, their son arrived more than two months early. He was a nine-week uh, premature baby, um, about as big as a mallard. And uh, he went to, the, he was in the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, and then he came home. We had had him for, I think it was, it's six weeks before I went and had my surgery. The first of two brain surgeries took 18 hours and left Hall severely debilitated. It left me where I um, couldn't really walk or talk. Hall spent weeks in therapy, learning to reconnect broken pathways in his brain, but his baby boy and his work with Freddie helped him persevere. It was a crazy time, but the the one thing that wasn't was fooling with Freddie. With one grand hunt test passed, Freddie needed another to earn the HRC title of Grand Hunting Retriever Champion. I get out of the hospital can, and we go to the training pond at Mayflower and uh, I'm barely able to walk, but we can get through the drill right on time. So that kind of became my, my form of therapy to get better was to stay at that and then there was the, the second grand was in the fall after I'd gotten out of surgery in the late summer. Getting to the multi-day out-of-state hunt test proved difficult in other ways. Because of his surgery recovery, Hall was temporarily sidelined from practicing law and family medical bills had mounted. Somebody squared away his entry fee to the grand to take care of that. And then I came across a uh, an old uh, expense check that I had for like 127 bucks. And uh, I cashed that and that was gonna be my lunch and ice and coffee money. <laughs> His training buddies from the Central Arkansas based Pin Oak Hunting Retriever Club also lent a helping hand. Every, every time I met, sat down and had a meal at a restaurant, um, somebody else picked up the tab. It was unbelievable, unbelievable. How, how great everybody was. Freddie did his part and aced the test, earning the title of Grand Hunting Retriever Champion. It was a major step on Freddie's path to the HRC Hall of Fame and a critical part of Hall's recovery. It was instrumental. It was something constructed to do where I had an actual goal. Freddie went on to pass two more grand tests. And after amassing the requisite points and other sanctioned hunt tests, he was inducted into the HRC Hall of Fame in March 2019. After I got out of the hospital, fooling with the dog, I, I could do it. And uh, it felt like I was uh, in touch when I was uh, messing with him. Freddie's success in hunt tests was the result of intense drive and desire. He's like a rocket going to get it and like a rocket bringing it back. You know, a lot of dogs don't come back at the same rate that they go out, but that's, that is not how Freddie operated. Freddie's incredible ability and training were just as obvious on a late season hunt last season at Baumita. He never stops looking up, never. Reckless desire. He wants to go get it so bad that if he hears one splash that somebody else shot a short distance away and he's got a very good uh, set of ears about where it is, he'll even go try to get it. And almost on cue, as Hall talked about dog training while his friend Virgil Hogan tried to finish up his limit 100 yards away, Freddie took leave of our flooded timber interview to put an exclamation mark on Hall's words. And he has passed more ground.
surely to goodness he's not going to pull this off. You got one? Wow. Leave it. Many words have been written about the special bonds between humans and our dogs, but you'd be hard pressed to find a man and a dog that illustrate that bond better than Keith Hall and Freddie. He was a, a link to what was going on very much. And it was something that I enjoyed doing and, he, and I could see progress and he loved every minute of it. It's crazy to me that he's, uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. Not crazy, but it's so remarkably rare it's a lot rarer than being a lawyer, that accomplishment, put it that way. And he's just been steady, very steady.